Hi, this is Simon Upstall and welcome to another tutorial for Motion 5. And today we're going to be looking at a follow-up to my recent slot machine tutorial and we're going to be looking at creating this alternative version using numbers. So this is a slightly different method to the one we looked at before. It works very nicely and it has its own advantages. So let me just quickly tell you what my project looks like. It's 1920-1080, it's 24 frames a second, and our duration is 7 seconds. And I want to remind you to come to the Motion Preferences, and in the Time tab, make sure your frame numbering starts at 1. OK, so let's come over to the library. Let's look for generators, text generators, and numbers, and let's bring that in. Come over to the inspector. First thing I'm going to do is select a font. I'm using Menlo because that's a fixed width font that ensures our numbers stay in position. I'm going to align the text to the center. I'm going to set a size of 200. Then I'm going to come over to the generator tab here and I'm going to set the start value to zero and the end value to nine, because we want to cycle through from zero to nine. Then I'm going to come to frame 10 down here, making sure we've got frames selected like that. And then I'm going to hit O. And that cycles through our nine or 10 numbers, I should say, starting at zero. Let's Grab the rectangle tool and draw a quick rectangle around this. Let's move it behind the numbers. Let's change the fill color to a nice dark red. Let's select the outline and set a width of five. Let's come to properties, right click, reset parameter. And then we just need to come back to our numbers and format and set the baseline value to negative 70. And we've got everything lined up. So now we're going to take this group and we're going to make clone layer. And let's turn off the original group and close it up. Okay, so with that clone selected, we're going to come to Object, Replicate. So the first thing we need to do with the replicator is turn on the 3D switch. Then we're going to select Sphere for the shape, Outline for the arrangement, and I'm going to set my radius to 333. Now, perhaps surprisingly, we don't want to build it with a single column and 10 rows like that, because that's not going to work. Well, we need to do it the other way around. So we need to set the columns to 10 and the rows to 1. And then let's come down turn on a line angle, let's turn off play frames, and if I open this up here, let's set the source frame offset to one. Okay, now we need to come to properties for the replicator, and let's rotate it through negative 90 on Z, come back to the replicator itself, come to the angle field and type positive 90. And there we go. If we come to the X rotation now, you can see we've got that working really nicely. So the tricky thing though is to animate it. And what I want to do with this one is I want to animate it so we get that really nice slow down effect that you have with some slot machines where you agonizingly discover that you've got the wrong value and you've lost yet more money. So, I'm going to do this with a ramp behavior. I want to set up the start and end values of this ramp behavior to start to 90 and the end value to 2790. And then I'm going to come to the keyframe editor because it'll allow us to see what's happening with the animation curve. Now, at the moment, it's a straight line, which means there's no slowdown or speed up. So we can enter a curvature value of 100, and you can see we've got this sort of S curve, but that still doesn't really quite do what I want. 
it slows down, but not as much as I want it to. So what we're going to do is we're going to duplicate that ramp behavior. Right click, duplicate. And the second instance, we're going to set the start value to negative 360 and the end value to zero. Now we just need to play with the end offset. So for my first ramp, I'm going to set that end offset to 85. I think you can see now that we've got a very different shape to our ramp. And if we press play, you see we get that really nice slowdown like that. And then we just need to enter an offset of say 25, which will get it to come to a halt a second before the end. So let's have a look at that. Comes to a halt there. So it's the interplay of these two ramp behaviors that's going to give us this really, really nice effect. Now, the other thing that we can usefully do, given this setup, is we can effectively dial in the end value uh, using the end value of our second ramp. So let me call this ramp selector just so we know which we're talking about. So an end value of zero is giving me zero. An end value of 36 will give me one. End value of 72 will give me two. 108 will give me three. 144 will give me four and so on. And as you can see, we're going up in multiples of 36. Uh, so that's a tenth of a complete revolution, as you'd expect. So that's a really nice way of being able to dial in the numbers that we want. The next thing we need to do is we just need to come over and make four of these. So I'm going to set this first one to negative 350. And I'm going to duplicate it four times. So I could right click duplicate, but I'm just going to hit Command D four times. So Command D, Command D, Command D, Command D. We need to move these into place. So the second one here, let's move it to negative 175. This one here to zero. This one here to positive 175. And this one here to positive 350. Now, you're probably noticing that there's something a bit funky here. And that's because this group is not 3D. So if we turn it to 3D, you'll see that we avoid that overlap factor. So next we just need to make a foreground slot. So I'm going to come to the library. I'm going to come to generators and I'm going to look for color solid. I'm going to drag that up to the top. Now I don't actually want this to be 3D. Uh, I'm going to turn it back to 2D. I'm going to take the color solid, come and draw a rectangle mask like that. Come over to the inspector. We're going to set the mask blend mode to subtract. I'm just going to hide the keyframe editor so we've got a bit more space. Let's adjust the dimensions of this. I'm going to go for 150 on the width and 210 for the height. Let's come over and reset the transform to center it all up. Let's just actually increase that width a bit more so we see the white on the edge and increase the height so we also see the white at the top. So what have we got there? We Let's go for 185 and 245. Let's move this one over to negative 350 and let's duplicate it four times. You'll notice that there's something wrong here and we're going to be fixing that shortly. So command D, command D, command D, command D. This last version, I'm going to set to positive 350 on X. I'm going to shift select all of them. I'm going to come up to object, alignment, distribute horizontal centers. So now we've got our slots, but we do have a problem with the alignment of the, the numbers. So what we're going to do is we're going to add a camera and we're going to set the angle of view to zero. And you'll see what that does. 
is that very nicely cancels out the distortion that was causing everything to be a bit of a mess. So I realize I've actually made these slots a bit too big. So I'm going to shift select them all and we can actually adjust the size of them all at once. 155 was probably right for the width and probably 215 for the height is, is good. Okay, so then what we can do is we can select this group here, properties, come down to drop shadow, open that up. Let's increase the opacity to 100%. Let's set the angle to 270. Let's increase the distance to bring that down quite a bit. And let's increase the blur. And then we've got that nice shading on that. So then we can add a light. We need to move that light quite a way out to say 600, like that. Move this up like that. Increase the intensity, 200. And we can just change our numbers here. Uh, just, just, I'm going to just do this all randomly. We've got a random set of numbers there. And they all gradually line up into position. And of course we can change the end offset values if we want them all to line up at different times. But I think in this instance, it's actually quite nice to see them all land at once because of the slowness of the animation. And I'm just going to quickly change that foreground color because that blue is offending me, I'm afraid. Now, one thing you'll probably have noticed is that this isn't lining up properly. And that's because I was a bit sloppy when I made my rectangle and I didn't set up the right numbers. So this is the rectangle that we created right at the beginning in that original group. So we can come back in there and I'm going to set the width to 150 and the height to 215. And then that pretty much closes up that gap. One other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come to my group here with my foreground in it, this one here, and I'm going to right click and make 3D group, just so that light is now affecting that group as well. So there you go, that's more or less this effect done. Just want to point out, of course, that you can change the start values. So by adding 36 degrees to the start value, so minus 396, we'll change that start value. So again, just think of multiples of 36 and you can very easily set up your numbers. So if you are rigging that, that would be a pretty easy calculation to sort out. And finally, I'd like to point out that we can do exactly the same thing with images. And the trick with all of these things is to create uh, an array. So if we look down here, what I've done is I've created an array where each of one of these is one frame each. Let's solo this group here. And then you'll see as I step through, that's each one of my images. I then made a clone of that. And I used that as the source for the replicator. And obviously set the replicator to the same number of columns as I have images. So it really is that simple. Okay, thanks very much for watching. I hope that was an interesting one. See you again another time.